it's that you kind of you kind of know I'm almost there. I just got to get this, got to get this done. It is just a war, basically. Like when yeah. it gets to that stage of a race, it doesn't matter what the race actually is. When you get down to the last kind of mile or whatever, it's just a war, isn't it? It's just how much can you actually beat yourself up at that point? That's all it comes down to. And that brings us to the last one: the wall balls. Is that's just that's the ultimate in beating yourself up. <laughs> Have you has it been an unbroken hundred? I see, I saw something about like a, the Red Bull yeah. tag or something like that. If you get a hundred unbroken wall balls, have you yeah, attempted it? It's it's starting to happen a lot now. So, it, but it's it's so different. I don't know if, like if if people have done a lot of wall balls to listen to the show, but I can do 150, 160 here unbroken at home, even after oh, wow. a work. But in the race, <laughs> it gets to like fifty, and it feels like you've like a ton. But the, the first guy to do it in a serious composi- competition was that swimmer, Alex Rankovic, last year at Europeans. And interestingly, he told us, at, or at Worlds, he told us after the race, he didn't tell us before the race, obviously, but he, he had trained it to try and do it. And he, he could only do it if he slowed his run, previous run down by 15 seconds. So he tested and tested and tested and figured out that if he slowed down that last run by 15 seconds, he could go unbroken. And when wow. he did the math in his head then, he was like, right, if everyone is running 3.45s and I run four minutes, and by doing them unbroken, he actually did them in 3.20, and everyone else was doing them in like 3.50. So he saved 30 minutes on the wall balls, but he gave away 15 minutes. But like, it was crazy because to have that much confidence in yourself, at the time he, he was like, I think he was third in the race or something. He dropped back to like fourth and ended up coming second because of the wall balls. So he was confident enough to say, ah, I lose a few paces here because I know what I can do when I when I get in on the wall. Competitively, that is so hard. For your last kilometer run where you probably just empty the tank to go, you know what, 15, yeah. a full 15 seconds slower and like conserve energy while those that are probably around you are going that bit fast and you're probably yeah. like dropping down that leaderboard near the end. Like that is, yeah. like you say mentally, that is absolutely phenomenal. Is yeah. there stuff like that that's coming out in the last, because of the sport is getting bigger and bigger. And like you said, in the last couple of years, like it's just thousands now doing it in London. Are you finding that, that a lot of records are getting broken quickly in these, this last year or two uh, with different strategies and approaches and, and the sports just more evolving? Yeah, like the 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 every every record is just dropping now. But the things are changing a lot too. Like new equipment suppliers, people say the the sleds are lighter now. They're not lighter. They're just brand new sleds all the time by new equipment suppliers. So they're obviously going to move a bit faster when they're nice and shiny underneath and everything is nice and slick and there's no rust or anything. anything like that. <laughs> so that's that's a big factor of it getting faster. That all the equipment is all sprang brand spanking new now all the time so that's a, a big thing towards the records courses are getting to we get bigger venues now which means now you have these ones especially in spain where they're like effectively 400 meter run tracks like there's, there's banked curves not banked curves but actual curves instead of right angles like in dublin we had right angles everywhere like that was the slowest run course i've ever seen at high rocks is that changing this year Dublin, do you have any idea? Because because it, it seemed chaotic at times. It uh, Dublin for and and there was like uh, um like you did you you were did you race it? Yeah, that's the slowest we've ever raced. We were we were the only pair to break an hour in Dublin. Nobody else broke an hour. How many times did you almost go through a spectator on like the, the crossovers <laughs> and stuff like that? Because I had to cross over a fair few times, and so I I saw that that place a lot. Like I was doing a bit of social media and stuff for the gym. Um, but seeing people just be like thinking they were more important than the people actually doing the race, <laughs> and you saw, one or two were going through them. I was like, fair play. You probably should have dropped the shoulder and hit them harder because like <laughs> you're doing an event. Like it's like just just the 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 the, the lack of self awareness of it. I'd say that was an absolute. And then trying to ca- count your laps and everything else going on, it, it must have been a hell of a struggle. 